all right welcome back to the city girl writer channel where i talk about books and films and today we are going to continue from my last video where i was talking about jade war jade city and now we're going to finally talk about jade legacy the final book in the green in the green bone saga by fonda lee just to kind of do like a quick recap just in case but if i were you though check out my last video where i talked about jade city and jade war and now I get to talk about Jade Legacy. I know, look at that. Hardcover, Mama Rod Star paperbacks. I know, it doesn't make any sense. I'm going to get the paperback because my books seem to make sense. Um, anyways, so this is the, like I said, is the final book in the Green Bone Saga and the synopsis. Jade, the mysterious and magical substance once exclusive to the Green Bone Warriors of Kaycon, is now coveted throughout the world. Everyone wants access to the supernatural abilities it provides from traditional forces, such as governments, mercenaries, and criminal campaigns, to modern -day players, including doctors, athletes, and movie studios. As the struggle over control of Jade grows ever, ever larger and more deadly, the Call family and the aging ways of the Kekanese Greenbones will never be the same. Battered by war and tragedy, the Calls are plagued by resentments and old wounds as their adversaries are on the ascent and their country is riven by dangerous factions and foreign in interference. The clan must assert allies from enemies, set aside bloody rivalries, and make terrible sacrifices. But even the unbreakable bonds of blood and loyalty may not be enough to ensure the survival of the Greenbone clans and the nation they are sworn, sworn to protect. So, yeah, there's a lot of things that were are going to be happening in this book that happened. And also, this is the longest book. I think, how many pages does this book have? It has 713 pages wow yeah th this is definitely the longest book in the entire trilogy and i think and definitely the page length is definitely warranted because there's just so much that has to go on in in this book like with jade city we had we just trying to get introduced to the world you need to introduce to the clans and the and the call family so that was why it was jade city because we're focusing specifically on the city of john loon and then we had Jade War, which we're still in, like, the clan war, but, like, in a different kind of sense. Like, we're not, like, you know, fighting at each other in the streets like we did in Jade City. In Jade War, we were, um, we are trying to deal with war, basically, with just foreign interference with, like, other countries where we go outside of the, uh, outside of John Loon, but also outside of KCON to see these other countries, how they influence the clans and KCON itself, which therefore affects what happens with the clans. Especially since the clans are still going at each other, they're just doing it in different ways. Jade Legacy, same thing. In fact, it's actually even more of a bigger scope in Jade Legacy because not only are we thinking about KCON and the other countries, but we're also thinking about what it means actually to be a Greenbone, like the Greenbone way of life, which was introduced actually in Jade War, but we finally get to go dive deep and really explore basically the Kekanese diaspora in a way, which is why we call Jade Legacy because it's really more of a legacy of Greenbones, legacy of being of what it means to be Kekanese and being the green and the soul and what it means to be green and how the next generation has to figure out what to do with these clans. Because the clan war between the mountain and No Peak was because of, well, Hilo and Shay versus Ait Madashi and stuff. That's their war. But as far as like the children, the next pillars and their their way of just doing things and being what it means to be a green bone, it's going to be different than it was in the older generation, just like in Jade City. The generation before Lon, Hilo, and Shay, where Kekon was invaded by the Shatarians and had Shatarian occupation, and then the Greenbow Warriors had to fight their way into independence. That's a whole different story in, Kek in history of Kekonese history that, like, doesn't necessarily, it still affects Hilo, the generation of Hilo, Shay, and Lon, but, like, now it's different for, like, this newer generation when we get closer to the end of the book. Now, I'm not gonna really talk about spoilers because. Even though this book has been out since last year, it's been, actually it's going to be nearly a year, I think in November since this book has been out, but I know there's people out there who still haven't read it, and now that i finished Jade Legacy, I see why y'all are scared, okay? I read this thing, and ooh, Jesus, what? Ooh, ooh. Y'all ain't ready. I'm telling you this right now. Y'all are not ready for this book. I cried. Tears were shed. When I say tears were shed, I mean actual tears were falling from my eyes. Now, if you do not know me, I'm one of those people that like rarely or just don't really cry when I'm reading. 
I can read something that's so devastating from a book. I can feel emotional, but like tears coming down my eyes. Nope. Or sometimes I just feel dead inside. Like, um, like the Poppy Word trilogy. There's so many devastating things that happen in that trilogy. And I didn't even cry once. Not a single tear. Not even close to tears either. I'm just like, damn, that was messed up. I just felt empty, numb. I was like, dang, I felt numb on this one. And that's in another adult fantasy trilogy. And I'm just like, I, I couldn't even cry. I didn't even cry with Jade City. I felt mad. I definitely felt emotional for sure. I didn't cry in Jade War. I definitely felt emotional too. Jade Legacy, I felt mad. I felt numb. I felt sad. And I cried. I did all them things, okay? I'm just like, if a book like this can make me cry, you know someone was doing something right. I'm like, I don't know. But just to let you know, as far as star ratings are concerned, Jade City is more of a solid 4 to 4.25 stars. Jade War is definitely more of, um, it's definitely four and a half stars for me. And then Jade Legacy. Oh yeah, this is a solid five stars. Like this is like, Jade Legacy has to be the best adult fantasy trilogy conclusion that I've ever read. Even though, to be fair, I haven't actually read a lot of adult fantasy trilogies or series in general. I think the only ones I've really read besides the Greenbone Saga was like, again, the Poppy Award trilogy and actually i think that was it i think it's just yeah i think that yeah i think that's it as far as adult fantasy is con- yeah i think that's it oh and actually uh sorry uh, another thing too the greenbone saga is not just adult fantasy it's also, it's also adult urban fantasy i say this with a distinction because fantasy is a pretty big genre and there's a lot of subgenres, especially with guarding Contemporary fantasy versus urban fantasy. Urban fantasy is basically fantasy that takes place in a city. It doesn't have to be in a contemporary setting, like, at all. Like, the Greenbone Suck, it's not really a contemporary setting, like, at all. But I wouldn't say it's a historical setting. Like, I don't know, something that could have happened in, like, a couple decades ago or something. I mean, a few decades ago, but it doesn't feel like it's dated or, or anything. It's just literally a fantasy that takes place in an urban setting. That's that. And the contemporary fantasy is literally fantasy that takes place in our modern world. It doesn't necessarily have to be a city, but it takes place in a modern, in our modern world. You know, there's one-to-one comparisons in that regard. But anyways, I had so many thoughts. What did I say? Oh, wait, I forgot. These thoughts are pretty spoilery. Um, let's see. What are the ones I could say that are not spoilery? Oh, yes. So much fucking death. There was so much death. You know what? That's another thing, too. I should talk about content warnings for this entire series. But mostly just in Jade Legacy, because honestly, the content warnings in Jade Legacy are kind of similar to the ones in Jade City and Jade War, for the most part. What are these content warnings? Okay. For the entire trilogy, we have violence, murder, death, gun violence, for sure. There's a lot of violence, death, murder, and gun violence. Like, people be dying, all right? There's a lot of people who die. Even major characters from, like, both sides of clan, they die. Jade City, Jade War, Jade Legacy, no one's safe. No one is safe. Uh, let's see. I think, for sure, definitely sexual content. I wouldn't say it's more of a... I mean, it's just a content war in the sense of just, um, there are sex scenes. There's not a very... I wouldn't say it's, like, in the erotic sense, but just, like, it gets kind of graphic as far as what these characters are doing, because this is a doll. You can write it, be a lot more graphic. Uh, I think in Jade City, though, there were, like, two explicitly written sex scenes um jade war i think there's two or three and then jade legacy there's like several with different characters for various points in time and stuff so to be honest the sexual content could vary and sometimes it's graphic sometimes more like a fade to black and not that descriptive but if that's something that is um you don't you you're if you're about i'm just letting you know there is sexual content in there whether and it's both explicit and kind of off page or fade to black kind of way uh, oh yes i don't know i'm not totally i don't remember specifically for jade city or jade war for this one but it's definitely happened a lot in jade legacy and we have suicide like there's actually a few people who actually do um unalive themselves so if you're so so i do want to warn you about suicide um that's, that's a pretty graphic one that is a very these ones all these things i said are very graphic Content warnings, and then we have some minor ones for specifically Jade Legacy. We have miscarriage. It's not very explicit, but it does talk about a pretty minor character that does experience a lot of miscarriages, so that's also triggering for you. There's that. Um, rape, that's minor too. It's not explicit. It just talks about how characters were were raped. Um, 
but it's not anything explicit or anything. It's just that they tell you that it happened, just to let you know. It's not explicit. It's minor, but it's there, let you know. Hobophobia. Now, this one is definitely for sure in the entire trilogy, but it's minor. It's nothing graphic or even moderate. It's just a minor thing that if you don't pay attention, you can kind of gloss it over, but it is something to let you know. That like, and even though this world, yeah, there are definitely queer characters in this world. Sometimes they're not that explicit, especially with um, some like minor characters. But like one of the major characters, especially in the Call family, Amory Anden, he is a queer man. And there is, homo- he does experience homophobia in, in slightly varying degrees, just very small bits here and there. I'm not sure what the text says that like in the world of KCON, there are people who like, eh, regarding, you know, being queer, but as far as the call family, they're pretty accepting of that, especially with Andon and stuff. They just want to make sure he's happy and things. But you can, I don't know, at least with, um, but then again, sure they seem like okay with it, but like Andon is not always that comfortable talking about it with, with the, with the rest of the calls. So, mm-hmm. and also it doesn't help either too with like, um, and Jade War a little bit because he does, because something happens, but he has to, um, end a relationship a little bit to get what he really needs and wants from someone else but yeah so that sucks right there so there's that and then homophobia in here as well so again it's minor but like it's just a matter of characters are just eh, iffy about um and being queer just like kind of just being iffy and um being iffy that when is a stone eye that kind of thing basically but like so it's not like outright like they want to like kill and or anything it's just a matter of mm, okay fine but you could tell they're just uncomfortable basically that's that's the kind of homophobia from like the entire trilogy um just let you know uh let's see torture oh yeah there's definitely torture throughout the entire trilogy it's pretty explicit just to let you know it's graphic uh, torture so prepare for that um for this book specifically we have infidelity of two different kinds there's there's an infidelity regarding that leads to another relationship, and then there's infidelity in the sense of just what happened in Jade War, this person is now not being faithful. And honestly, I kind of really want to talk about it, but it's technically spoilery, even though it happens within the first 50 pages. But like, you know what? Mm, do I want to talk about it? You know what? No. I'm just going to say this infidelity, all right? And even though I'm mad about it, but like, I, I can't, I can't spoil it. If you've read this book, though, talk about it in the comments below, and I will talk about it with you. Just make sure you say it's, there's spoilers, because it is spoilery about infidelity and who's doing it and stuff, so. Oh, yeah, sexual harassment. There's a uh, couple scenes in Jay Legacy with sexual harassment. It's more of a minor thing, but it's, it is pretty moderate in the sense of, like, it's not too explicit. It doesn't happen for so long, but, like, it's there so just let you know and oh yes chronic illness one of the characters after the end of jade war was badly injured and this person had was chronically ill for several years it took this person a long time to recover but even when this person recovered they still were having difficulties so yes there is um chronic illness in here too just to let you know i can't say say who or what happened because you need to read this entire trilogy Maybe I can talk about it in a spoilery way, but right now, majority of this review will be spoiler free for those who are scared to read this book. Okay, let, let's be let's be kind. Um, so yeah, so that's all the content warnings that I can think of um, that I wrote down. What other thoughts that I had? Oh yeah, so much fucking death. No one in the call family is safe from fucking death because no one's safe. People from the mountain die. People from the I family die. People from the just people everywhere be dying in this entire trilogy, man. No one is safe. So if you're scared about one, maybe one of your favorite characters, especially if it's from the Call family dying, trust me, no one is safe. Any one of these characters can die. Wan could die, Shay could die, Hilo can die, Annie could die, um, Wen could die. And all these characters, those five characters, they could die. And then you just have to be here in your feelings. I'm still mad, Madam Lee. I'm still mad. Anyways, um, oh yes. I was like, wait, what can I say that is not spoilery? Yes, Ait Madashi, the pillar of the mountain. She's one cunning bitch, but I madly respect her. Like, damn, she knows how to calculate, how to, like, pivot from one thing to another. Sure, no people getting these wins, but then Ait, 
She gave him them wins from the mountain, too. I'm like, oh, d-. she's been doing this, like, in the entire trilogy. But in Jay Legacy, oh, oh, okay, you out here really being that kind of bitch. Okay, I respect you. I'm mad at you, but I respect you. I'm Adashi. I'm Mata. A bitch that I can respect. Okay, I'm, I'm just, she cool, okay? I'm just saying. She got my nerves, like, in the sense of just, like, being an antagonistic force against the calls, but, like... If we can get like a um I don't know, like a version of the Greenbone saga in the mountains perspective, I would read it. I'm just saying. I want to like be in this woman's head and like really like I, I want to be in her head because ooh, she she is really cool. Okay. Um oh finally, actually, this one I could definitely talk about. Barrow. Remember my last video? I'm here being mad. Like, why the hell is this boy still here? Like, why is he here? Like, what is the purpose of this character? I was like, please, please tell me in Jay Legacy there's an importance for this character. Please tell me there's a reason why he is here. And I am here to report that it's a yes, he's important, but also no, he's not important. He's, how do I explain this? Barrow is an important, insignificant character. I know, it sounds very contradictory, it sounds like an oxymoron. How on earth can you be important and insignificant? I'll explain it this way without spoiling it. The point of Barrow's character is that he's supposed to be an insignificant character that can weave around the story. We don't necessarily have to care about him in the sense that we have to care about what happens with the mountain and, the, and no peak, but he's one of those characters that like he can, he's one of those characters supposed to represent like trying to be a part of the myth regarding green bones and the importance of um green bones because what barrow did in the middle of jade city he thinks like oh this is what's the best thing that ever happened to me how come my life ain't more significant why are the guys doing me any favor like like i'm supposed to be like the big top dog and here i am just living in a shithole and it's just more in the sense of just like um it's just more in the sense of just like He's always meant to be insignificant. He can't keep trying to make his life more significant than it already isn't. Like, you're, you're just significant. You're meant, he's just meant to be a nobody. Now, for some people, that can be really annoying. It's like, well, okay, it doesn't necessarily explain why he has to be here. But without Barrow, though, he kind of does move the plot in his own background way. And also, he gets us a perspective of, like, what it means to be just like an ordinary citizen of KCON, that it's not even a green bone, just trying to strive to be something that he'll never be. He'll never really be that great. He's not meant to be that great. He's just meant to be a nobody who just goes on in the world like like anyone else. Like, that's just the point of his character. Which I am glad that this book was able to do, that this book was actually able to explain why an insignificant character is, has been following along, we've been following along this insignificant character for so long. And it's kind of, it's kind of interesting. And also, another thing too that with this book is that um, time. So in Jade City, I'm trying to remember how much time has passed. I think it's been, hmm, I can't remember if it's been a year, year and a half, or two years since the start of Jade City to the end of Jade City. I think it could be around there. And then the time between Jade City and Jade War, I think it was only a few weeks. Maybe a couple, few weeks or something. No. No, that's not right. Um, it was a year. From Jade City to Jade War was a year. I remember now. Even though it doesn't feel like it, you're just like, wow, I feel like we just, what we did from at the end of Jade City and Jade War, felt like we just went right through it. But no, no, no. There was time that passed between. It was a year. And then from Jade War to Jade Legacy, it was also another year. But within Jade War, I think there was a five-year I think we went the past five years, something like that, I think, I think, yeah, I think Jade City was a year to two years, and then Jade War was like five years throughout the book, and then Jade Legacy, we had the biggest time jump ever, we went from like six, seven years to 20 years, and I'm just like, what, and by the end of the book, we're like 26, 27 years, and I'm like, 26, 27 years since... I think it was since the middle of Jade City, because there's a big event that happened in Jade City. Um, so basically, actually, it's a clan war. That's what it is. 26 years since the start of the clan war, which happened, which all started in the middle of Jade City. That's what it is. That's what it is. 26 years. Yo, 
that is a big time jump. I was, when that happened, I was like, whoa, we went from six, seven years to 20 years. Do you all know what be happening in 20 years? We had a whole, whole new generation. Um, takes me, this is not spoilery because... There's just new characters. We get new characters. We actually have characters, actually, that we're already introducing to war. Because, again, you know, people get kids. We need to start having a new start of a new generation. So we have Nico, who is Lon's son. We have uh, Rue, who is Hilo's son. We have Jaya, Hilo's daughter, um, who's also older and stuff. Um, so, yeah, by then, they're, like, in their 20s. Early 20s, late teens, basically. Or late 20s, actually. For Nico, he's in his like, late 20s by the end of the book. Um, Jaya, I think she's in her early 20s. And Rue, early 20s as well. Jay has a daughter, um, Tia. I think she's starting to become in her mid -teen, mid to late teens by the end of the book. I think mid-teens, to be honest. Um, oh, yeah, there's a whole lot of relationships that be going on. I'm like, ooh, jeez. I do want to talk about some spoilery things, but also, like, no, I got to make this spoiler free because I need people to read this book so I can rave and rant and talk up and praise this book along with y'all. But y'all need to be reading it. More people need to be reading this book. I know there's people who have G Legacy and they haven't started, they haven't read it yet. I know y'all do. I've been seeing it. I've been watching some booktubers. I know, I know, I see you. But anyways... But that's just like time jumping. Like, like whoo, so much things that happen with time and so much has happened. And that's another thing too with Jay Legacy. Like, like the timeline has expanded to the point that you could really feel the actual legacy and what it means to be a green bone. Like the only way you can really conclude this massive, expansive world of KCON and the green bones is if you give us time from when we started to this new generation. So that you can have a better sense of just, like, the actual effects of, like, Lon, Hilo, Shay's time. When they were, like, in the prime of them being green bones. To pretty much a time where now we have Nico, Jaya, Rue, and Tia now. And their generation. And what it means to be green. What it means to be green for them. And what it means to be a call. Like, that's the thing I just really like about this. Con the conclusiveness of this trilogy. That, like, everything wraps up. In some way, I want to say it wraps, it wraps up nicely in the sense that, like, there's an ending for some characters or just a new beginning for others. Ending in the sense, like, maybe they just died or they served their purpose and it's like, well, they just going to live life or they die. Whether by unaliving themselves or they got murdered or they literally got killed, whichever way it is. That happened too. And I really liked how all of the characters' character arcs concluded. It really made sense to their personalities and their goals and ambitions. It just made sense on how it all ended for them every single once even for the ones that did die it just made sense when i finally was able to sit down and really think about it it, it just made more sense i really it's just amazing like i don't i'm trying to find ways to put words into thoughts and like how i truly think and feel about this trilogy because if you see my thumbnail i just want to really reflect on like the entire um Greenbone Saga as well with Jade Legacy because there's no way I can really talk about Jade Legacy without thinking about how the other books brought us to this moment. But I can't tanks me can really do that without spoiling it. So in just in a general sense, what happens in Jade City and Jade War comes back in Jade Legacy. Even if you forgot about it, it's gonna come back. It everything comes back all together. It's full circle. This is a trilogy that's completely full circle with characters, even the, not just the main ones in from both sides. I'm talking about even minor characters, even characters that aren't even kicking knees. We get perspectives from the Spinians and some Shastarians. We get perspectives from different characters in different parts of the book. And it's like, how on earth did Miss Lee be able to juggle all of these characters, all the perspectives, all of their histories, and making sure it makes sense within the timeline. Like, how on earth can you remember all of this? Did you, like, I need to know, do you put a spreadsheet? I need to, if I could talk to Miss Lee, I will have to ask about her writing process and her world building. Because again, like I said in my last, when my, in my last video, talking about the first two books, this woman is great with world building and her magic system. I don't know how she was able to keep track of all these characters, all these timelines, to make sure it all makes sense, especially for the ones that died too. Like, you gotta make sure it all makes sense. It gotta make, make, make it has to make sense. 
I don't know how she does it. I, I wish I knew how she does it because my God, I wish to aspire to that level of creativity, consistency, and just the writing. Like, oh my gosh, y'all, please read this book. If you have already read Jason E. Jade War, please, please read Jade Legacy. You have to read this book. And I read all of these books via audio. Jade Legacy is the longest book I've ever read. It's also also via uh, via audio was also the longest too. It was 28 hours long. And wait, how long did it take me to read this book? Me trying to figure out, uh, how long did it take me? I gotta look at Storygraph because... Oh yeah, if you really want to know like my real ratings and stuff, go on Storygraph because Storygraph lets me to do decimals. If I go to Google Reads, I'm like, eh, I gotta either round up or round down. And I'm like, mm. So yeah, let me look at Storygraph. Oh, a 28 hour audiobook. It took me eight days to read it. I read this book fast, damn. I read that book fast. Like y'all, a book this thick. Video audio with 1.2 time speed. Eight days, 28 hours. Wow. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I was definitely loving this book. I was like, because I, I was listening uh, to this while I was at work and I was just like, yes, let's keep going. I was like, yes, keep going. What's going to happen next? What's going to happen next? What's going to happen? How is this all end? And y'all, the part, again, there is a part that I cried and I cry for... What did I cry about? Oh, I cried for a character death, which I'm still so shocked and sad that that even happened. One particular character died that I didn't even think was even going to die. I was like, wait, this person, why, why did this person have to die? And I really like this one. And I'm just like, he, what? I'm like, this character dies? Especially in the way that this character died too. I'm just like, dang. Just dang. This, that's my, I was like, y'all, I was in tears. Luckily, I was at home. Luckily, I read this part when I was at home and I was not at work. I think late at night and I was just in tears. I felt so devastated. I was like, what the, I was like, why? He, why? You didn't have to die. I thought you were safe. Again, why, why on earth would I think this person was safe? When another person I also really liked from the first book died. Like, what am I talking about? What am I, I shouldn't, I shouldn't have done that to myself. I set myself up. I set myself up for failure. But yes, I did cry. I shed so many tears. I was grieving. I was grieving. I was like, this character, this character, like, like Miss Lee, Miss Lee. Why? Just why? Just saying. Just why? <sighs> but anyways, again, I rated this book five out of five stars. This is literally the best. The Greenbone Saga has to be the best adult fantasy trilogy. Well, adult urban fantasy trilogy I've ever read, even though it is the only urban fantasy trilogy I've ever read so mm. as far as fantasy though as far as like conclusiveness how to like end wrap everything up and come full circle with every character even the minor ones that we get introduced and just other plot points J Legacy man J Legacy is this book it's this book y'all need to be reading it I don't know about y'all but y'all need to read it please read it um, I wish I had some quotes, though. I'm, that's another thing too, I'm going to probably do if I ever have time is to reread the Greenbone Saga again. But, like, so I can, like, not only annotate it, but also so I can um, read it physically. And also, I want to get some good quotes. Because there were a lot of good quotes, but I can't really remember those quotes. Especially in Jay Legacy, there were so many good quotes, man. I'm telling you, there's so many things. So many goodness! Yeah, and also, I really think I should do some rereading for sure. But, uh, let's see. Is there anything else I wanted to note? I guess I could say my favorite characters. Now that I've finally read the entire trilogy now. Favorite characters. Lon, for sure. Shay, definitely. I ain't Mata. She a cunning bitch, but I love her. Wen, for sure. Anden, I really like Anden. Nico, Nico, just... Let's go. Rue, 
adorable. Adorable. I also really like Jaya. We don't get too much of her, but like, I really am just curious about her. And like, I do like her personality. She does remind me of Hilo. Like, she's definitely Hilo's daughter. And I'm just like... But she also gives me like this when she also gives me when as well for like Hilo and when like she's just a mixture of this Hilo and when and I just love it I I just love it um so yeah basically the college children right there Tia seems sweet we don't get too much of just really in her perspective in anything but like I do like when she's just around and stuff she's just a sweet kind gentle little girl she's adorable me thinking of other characters I'm like okay come on now you can remember names um is that it is it this nine. Yeah, basically. So pretty much I like just about everyone in the call family <laughs> except for Hilo. I'm sorry, y'all. Um I won't say I hate Hilo, but I don't I'm not going to say I like him either. Hilo is just one of those characters that you know they have to exist. And I just care about Hilo in the sense of how I care about Cass Brecker. As in like Cass Brecker from the Six of Crows duology. Cass Brecker is literally the bottom for me as far as the like, Crows hierarchy for me as far as favorites i don't i barely care about kaz i or at least kaz himself i only grow to like him towards like the final book which again i did in j legacy because he'll be making me mad he makes me so mad but then he does things and i'm like okay okay i can tolerate you that's all i gotta say because just read this book and y'all y'all see what i'm saying I, I just gotta say y'all see what i'm saying but anyways thank you again for coming to my channel city girl writer yeah i'll see what i can do for other videos um i'm definitely want to do some more book reviews for sure i want to do some reading vlogs for sure um currently i am working on my babble reading vlog but i still need to keep reading the book so don't know when that vlog's gonna come out i don't know i mean this channel is a pretty chill channel please subscribe if you like my content and stuff and comment below like video subscribe please I'm trying to like have something and I'll, I will try to have a video at least once a month just to have something, just anything. I don't know. Who knows? I could do TVRs. I could do wrap ups. I can do literally whatever I want. But also keep in mind though, this channel is not just about book stuff. It's also about film stuff. So if you don't see any book content, mostly because I'm talking about film things and you will see some of that, maybe... Sometime later. I can't say when because I have commitment issues. Anyways, see you next time. Bye!